still in their post-coital glow, Natasha and Vincent go to meet with their contact at the District, an outdoor shopping center in the city of Tustin, built partially on a former military base, the Marine Corps Air Station. The meeting place is the Five Guys Burger Joint. Their thus far nameless contact had informed them that he would be identifiable by his sleeve, an arm-length tattoo of outer space, with stars and planets and flying saucers. And there he is, sitting on a bench just outside the restaurant, looking younger than expected, like college-age young, wearing a t-shirt, raggedy jeans, flip-flops, and a ball cap, under which is an electric blue hairdo of an undercut with side-swiped bangs. Except, he is a she. Vincent and Natasha look at each other as if to say, this can't be the person, can it? But the tattoo is clearly evident, and when the person sees them, she knowingly gives them a big grin, stands, and approaches them while offering a hand. She introduces herself as Bohemian. It's a code name. I hope you understand I can't give you my true name. You can just call me Bo. We, uh, had the impression that you were a man. Why? Are you sexist? You can't believe a woman can hold a position of such importance? What? No. It's just that Jane said... I've never actually met Jane. It was all emails and texts. So it was Jane that made assumptions, I guess. That sexist bitch. Wait, I don't think that's right. I'm kidding. My real name, which, like I said, I can't divulge, is unisex. So it's an easy mistake to make. Lighten up, Vincent. You're looking a little stressed out. Bo, chuckling, starts walking toward the restaurant. Vincent lags behind while giving her the finger. Once inside, Natasha and Vincent order bacon cheeseburgers all the way, meaning with all the works, while Bo orders a regular burger plain. They all order fries. Bo makes it clear that she does not want to talk about the subject matter just yet, especially not in the presence of others. And so they converse as if on a first date. How do you like your job? Where do you go to school? Do you have any brothers and sisters? What do you like doing for fun? Are you a cat person or a dog person? Etc. Bo is being flirty with Vincent, or so it seems. But upon close inspection of the physical cues and verbal subtext, it's clear that Bo's amorous intentions are also aimed at Natasha. Vincent is oblivious, but Natasha notices and mentally raises an eyebrow at the not necessarily unwelcome attention. Under different circumstances, she might have pushed for the threesome. However, based on prior experience, Natasha has a strict rule against getting kinky with strangers. Besides, they need to stay professional. There are more important things at stake right now. When done with the meal, Bo walks them to the perimeter of the shopping center adjacent to a six-lane roadway, across which is the Marine Corps Air Station, or what remains of it. There are now a number of commercial and residential buildings on the site. The former military base is almost unrecognizable, except for the two iconic giant hangars that still lord over the property as if silent guards keeping watch. These massive structures were built during World War II to house squadrons of manned blimps, a.k.a. airships. The hangars stand 17 stories high, are a thousand feet long and 39 feet wide. In other words, they're ginormous. Bo points at the nearest hangar. That's building 29. The alien is being held there. Doesn't the city own the property now? No, not the hangars. The Department of the Navy still owns them. Kind of risky, isn't it? Doing what you're doing in the middle of all this? That's exactly why we're doing it there. Who's going to suspect we're interrogating an alien in a hangar that's been sitting dormant for decades and essentially has become part of the backdrop? Why are you helping us? I haven't helped you yet. 
You told us where Misha was held. Misha? Huh. Is that his name? Yes. Interesting. He hasn't said much to us. It's nice to finally know his name. At least what he chose to name himself here on Earth. Here's the thing. You're not getting in that building. The place is locked down tight. High-level security system and armed guards. You need top-secret clearance just to get permission to ask whether you can gain entry. So what are we doing here, Bo? Before I say anything else, I need to know what's in it for you two. You guys are operating off the grid for this. Why? And so, Natasha tells her the truth. Well, not the whole truth. Just the part about how Misha is her sister's boyfriend. That they seem to love each other very much. And that her sister asked Natasha to help him, believing he is in danger. There's a long silence as Bo stares at Natasha until... <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. You're potentially risking your career and your life because this alien is your sister's boyfriend? Were they planning to get married and live happily ever after? Or is this some kind of kinky shit your sister's into? It would have been more believable if you told me you were like, like a double agent or something trying to kneecap America's effort at gathering alien intel. Natasha is now regretful that she even thought of potentially having a threesome with Bo. First of all, fuck you and your judgmental bullshit. Secondly, Vera want me to save someone who she thought was in danger, someone she very much cared about. Thirdly, I will lay down my life for my sister without having to think twice about it. And if it's make you feel better, I even say I'm a double agent. Okay, look, I'm sorry for pushing your buttons, but I had to be sure you had good motives. I want what you want, which is to get Misha out of harm's way. Like I said, he hasn't divulged any information, and so I'm afraid the higher-ups are going to have us resort to torture to make him talk. I want alien intel as much as the next guy. Gal, but not like this. So you're just going to hand over Misha and let us walk? Is that so hard to believe? Yeah, it sort of is. How are you going to explain this to your people? I won't have to. I'll make the breach in security look like a foreign hack and untraceable to me. Locked doors become unlocked. Alarms go offline. Cameras go dark. What about the armed guards? There's a five minute lag time during the shift change at midnight. That's when I'll walk Misha out of the hangar and into your arms, so to speak. And when are we doing this? Be ready tonight. Tonight? That's a pretty quick turnaround. You can have all this set up that soon? Yeah, time is of the essence. Misha is in real danger. So, are we doing this? Natasha and Vincent take a moment. They exchange a look that says, we need to take advantage of this opportunity, but we need to be cautious. And if the shit hits the fan, We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Don't worry about us, Bo. We'll be here. Just make sure you get your end of the job done. Bo fills them in on the details of how things will go down. Before they part ways, Natasha asks Bo one more question. By the way, why is such a big deal for everybody? It's not like he's the first humanoid alien being captured, right? They're all important, Natasha. Any alien intel we can get our hands on is a boon to the scientific community. That's it? Everyone's falling over each other to get to Misha for run-of-the-mill information? Yeah, that's it. I don't know what else I can tell you. There's nothing else. Here's my advice. Get Misha back to his ship as soon as possible so he can leave the planet. He's in too much danger on Earth. After they part ways with Bo, Natasha and Vincent walk over to the Ben and Jerry's store in the mall and order a couple of post-lunch ice cream, chocolate chip cookie dough for Natasha 
and Chunky Monkey for Vincent. They sit in the patio and munch on their ice creams. Getting Bo to agree to help us was way too easy. In other words, I don't trust that bitch. It's right that you don't trust her because she's a liar. She lies about what everybody wants from Misha. What do you mean? They all want to know where his spaceship is. He just won the tech. They don't give a shit about Misha himself. How do you even know this? Natasha realizes that she just fucked up by revealing this information. The information that she shouldn't have any way of knowing without having the resources of a double agent. Feeling the panic rise within her, she does her best to tamp it down, like the veteran of spycraft that she is, and forces herself to come up with some excuse, no matter how lame, to cover her ass. A little bird told me. Are you seriously not going to tell me your source? Can't. Unfucking believable, Natasha. I'm neck deep in this shit, and you're refusing to tell me? I'm sorry, I can't. But what I can tell you, that the source is very reliable. If this information is true, then it changes everything. And it doesn't make any sense that they're cutting Misha loose. And... Oh wait, I just got it. They already knew about his relationship with your sister. And that you had personal stakes to rescue Misha. They think he would trust you enough to reveal where his spaceship is. And just when we're about to wish Misha bon voyage, is when they will pounce to retrieve the ship. I'm guessing they're going to kill the three of us in the progress. Well, we can't let that fucking happen, can we? No, we can't. So I'm giving you another opportunity to walk away from this, because it's just become more and more dangerous. Come here. She leans over the table, and he cups her face and kisses her long and hard. I've got personal stakes in this thing, too. What matters to you matters to me. On top of which, you need me to cover your ass. Natasha smiles at him and loves that he said what he said, but she almost wishes he had walked away because she's pretty certain that things will not end well for him. They show back up with Boris's van just before midnight, and park at the shopping center across the street from Building 29. Natasha and Vincent stay sitting in the van and watched intently for Misha and Bo. At exactly midnight, out of the shadow of Building 29, comes what appears to be a silhouette of a trio. They step through a narrow gate in the fence separating the military base from the street when the street light illuminates them, it's clear that there are three people coming toward the van, two on either side of the third, who's wearing an orange jumpsuit and seems to be dragging his feet. Natasha and Vincent get out of the van and open the back doors as the people arrive. One of them is Bo, and the one in the jumpsuit is unconscious. The third is a man wearing all black and is unfamiliar. They lay the man in the jumpsuit down in the back of the van. Is this Misha? What did you do to him? He had to be sedated. He didn't believe me when I told him he was being rescued. It's the only way we could get him out of here. Misha is movie star handsome, practically a Chris Hemsworth doppelganger. Natasha's a little jealous that her sister has been banging this hot space alien. Bo pats the shoulder of the unknown man. This is Avant-Garde. That's his code name, obviously, but you can call him A.G. He's going to be your escort. Whoa there. That's not part of the deal. Well, it is now. It has to be. We just got word that the Russians are hot on Misha's trail. They might even be watching us right now. Natasha clears her throat quietly averts her gaze, and tries not to look guilty. A.G. is a former army ranger, highly decorated, and is very capable. We can handle things ourselves. Vincent, please, be reasonable. If A.G. doesn't go, neither does Misha. Here's the thing, Bo. We don't trust you, 
And we sure as fuck don't trust AG. Natasha pulls out her pistol with the suppressor and shoots AG in his right knee. He slumps down to the pavement and groans with pain. Ah! His teeth and impressively avoiding screaming out in absolute agony. It's in the air, Bull. Does as told, while AG continues to writhe on the ground. Where did you implant the tracking device on Misha? Natasha points the pistol at AG again. And this time, she shoots him in the head. Fuck! Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck! You know what I'm talking about now! Deep State Dossier Podcast is a production of Radio Juice Media. To learn more, go to our website, radiojuicemedia.com. The story was written by Casey Pope and produced by Mariana Baker. The podcast was narrated by Harold Baker. Voice actors are Tori and Hugo Chacon, Mariana Baker, and Vaughn Aronson. Music composed and performed by Daniel Kaplan. Photography by Luke Aronson. If you like this podcast, you might also enjoy Casey's novels available on Amazon or visit his website at fugitivejuicemedia.com. Support Deep State Dossier on Patreon at patreon.com slash deepstatedossier for a whole bunch of exclusive stuff. We will shout your name or your business name on a beginning of our show as well as on Twitter. We will also have special episodes of Natasha's Sexy Dreams recorded only for our Patreon patrons. And of course, if you enjoyed the show, please rate us five stars and leave a nice review. For more information, including supporting material for each episode, visit RadioJuiceMedia.com, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Thanks for listening. <laughs>